Hi, I'm Amanda Jane Woodall and welcome to my fashion school. So in this series we look into British fashion history and the icons who inspired modern style. Today we will discover one of the pioneers of the swinging 60s, inventive, opinionated and commercially minded, it's Mary Quant. Barbara Mary Quant was born on the 11th of February 1934 and she grew up in Blackheath, London. Her parents were both from Welsh mining communities and both went on to become teachers. And Mary, she always wanted to sew and to design because she was very inspired by dancers and their costumes, but her parents didn't really like this idea and so she went to college to study to be an art teacher. She attended Goldsmiths College in London and it was here that she became heavily involved in the 1950s beatnik community and this was a group of artists, designers and models who were kind of fed up with the conservatism of British tradition. Whilst studying for her art diploma, Mary would also attend pattern making classes at night school. And this was because she really wanted to put her own identity into making clothing. And when she finished her diploma, she went to work at Eric's Milliners, which was a very poorly paid job, which meant that she couldn't always afford the essential things like food. And she was already tiny. She was only about five foot tall. And she also developed a very thin frame, which would become very aspirational to the women of that era. During the mid 50s, there was a rebellious teenage movement in Britain that really started to change popular culture. And Mary made clothes as a reaction to what was going on in her life. She really liked the Chelsea girls, the fashionable girls in London, and she thought they had great legs and she wanted to make clothes that showed them off. Mary had met the love of her life at college and this was Alexander Plunkett Green and without his support maybe Mary's life would have gone in a different direction because he purchased a property on Kings Road and converted the basement into a restaurant giving Mary the other part of the property which they turned into a fashion boutique called Bazaar. And Bazaar opened its doors to the public in 1955 and this is seen as one of the most important moments in 20th century fashion. In this boutique, Mary had created a brand new vision for shopping. So the fashionistas that came to the store, they could buy everything. They could buy their accessories and they could buy their clothing and shoes all in one shop and Mary had full creative control so she made sure that all the clothing coordinated together which gave this really very stylized look. This style of coordinated dressing appealed to the wealthy London fashionistas who would actually come and spend about 75% of their salaries on clothing. These clothes were a step away from drab colours and stiff tailoring of traditional British clothing. Mary Quant had noticed that although fabric was flat, women's bodies were actually round. So she started making clothes that were tubular and round so they would really give a smooth silhouette. She would buy her fabrics from Harrods and then use the money from the sales of the clothing to put into the next collection. So it was a very hand in mouth type of work and she didn't really know anything about wholesale or working with manufacturers or suppliers. 
This clothing was made to bridge a gap between childhood and womanhood as previously children had just grown up to dress exactly like their mothers but now with the teenage development and rock and roll people wanted to wear clothing that made them stand out from their parents. The designs were youthful and featured childlike symbols, sharp clean lines, geometric shapes and skirt hemlines that sat above the knee and Mary Quant is credited for giving these skirts their name. She named them mini skirts after her favourite car, the mini. But Mary had a rival in the creation of the mini skirt because Andre Carregas had also shown a collection of space themed skirts which were also mm -hmm. above the knee and when asked in an interview Mary Quant famously said it wasn't me or Carregas who invented the mini skirt it was the girls on the street that did it. Fashion historians argue that the actual rise of the miniskirt was a gradual process that was introduced to couturiers during the 50s and 60s as a replacement for the very full skirts of the early 50s. And also there is evidence of miniskirts as early as 4700 BC in Europe as well as in Egypt. However, what Mary certainly did pioneer was the London look and this was a coordinated outfit with monochromatic colours, geometric shapes that all matched together and was adopted by the mod subculture of Britain and the model Twiggy also famously adopted this style. It didn't take long for American buyers to start to crave these fashions and so JCPenney bought licensed products from Mary Quant in 1962 and they featured in 1700 of their stores. So now Mary Quant was being seen on a global scale. Mary's designs became more inventive as the 60s progressed and she is credited for inventing many new things in clothing design and retail and she pioneered the wet look in 1962 which was a collection of garments made from high shine PVC and this had taken her about two years to perfect. She also changed the style from heels to boots and made a pair of boots that had a zip off feature so you could change them from knee high to ankle length and also change the colour of the calf piece. Quant had a keen eye for visual branding and she created the brand's logo, a five petal flower. And this was something that she used to doodle while designing to kind of get her ideas flowing. And her partner saw an opportunity to incorporate the shop name onto the shopping bags and this meant that customers were actually advertising the brand becoming walking billboards. In 1966, she was awarded an honour from the Queen, which was an OBE for her services to fashion design, as well as many other accolades like being named the Sunday Times' Woman of the Year and being inducted into the Fashion Council's Hall of Fame. Mary stopped manufacturing in 1970 but she continued to design and direct the company until its sale in the 2000s. Mary Quant products continued to be manufactured and produced in Japan and sold worldwide. And what ever happened to the humble mini skirt? Well, it continues its long association with femininity and women's liberation to this day. An activist group labelled hippies saw a shift from the mini to the maxi skirt 
with hemlines in the 70s being the longest that had been seen since 1914. Until 1974 when alternative rock star Debbie Harry from Blondie wore a tight leather miniskirt that set the pulses racing again. Ten years later we see Madonna known for her sensuality writhing around on the MTV stage wearing a mini wedding dress and singing how she's like a virgin. In the 90s, Julia Roberts' performance in Pretty Woman saw her become decadent and beautiful, going from Lady of the Night to Lady by just ditching the miniskirt and thigh high boots. And the miniskirt went to extremes in the 2000s when we saw pop stars and rich socialites falling out of nightclubs exposing their tummies and their legs. And now the mini is adopted by many different subcultures and many different styles and is a symbol of body confidence, gender non-conformity and our obsession with nostalgia. A 70 year journey that still sparks debate fun, joy, lust and controversy. It's not bad for a small tube of fabric. So we've come to the end of this video. I will see you again in my follow-up video where I'll be looking again at the swinging 60s and the people that made it. <laughs>